In this video, I'm going to be talking about DC power supplies, voltage regulation, and circuit protection. The circuit I've set up here amplifies a tone output from an Arduino. Now there's a problem here. The amplified speaker circuit part runs on 9 volts, and the Arduino runs on 5 volts. I have one set of 6 AA batteries powering everything, so you may be wondering, how in the heck does he do that? Well, I'm going to show you. Just keep on watching. Here's a closer look at the power supply board itself. And here it is, drawn up in a little schematic so that you can take a closer look at it. I'll explain what the individual components do in a minute. So we're going to follow the current as it goes through the circuit coming out of the 9 volt battery. The first thing it goes through is a fuse and a diode and then it's essentially connected directly to the 9 volt output which powers my amplifier along with a 1000 microfarad capacitor to smooth the output and an LED to indicate the 9 volts is on and then we have this curious little thing called a voltage regulator now this is because computer chips require a very specific voltage most of the time Supply them with too little, and they won't be reliable. Also, applying a voltage over the computer chip's rated voltage is never an advisable thing to do unless it's on the 4th of July and you're outside. Okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. But you occasionally they do heat up and maybe even smoke a little bit if you give them too much voltage or if they've just failed for other reasons. Now a voltage regulator isn't the only way to lower the voltage to a level that you need. You can also use something called a voltage divider, which is basically two resistors of different sizes, and the actual values of the individual resistors don't matter, it's more the ratio that matters. But there are a few problems. First of all, the resistors themselves inherently limit the amount of current that a voltage divider can provide. Also, there's another problem, especially when running off of batteries. Essentially, the output of the voltage divider will always sync at the same rate as the input voltage. So as soon as the battery voltage starts to sync by even the smallest amount, you'll have the output sync by that very same amount. Once the voltage goes down to a point where your computer chips, your ICs are unreliable, your battery is essentially dead for that circuit because it can't power it reliably anymore. So voltage dividers aren't really that good for that sort of purpose, actually powering much of anything. Voltage regulators are better for this purpose. A voltage regulator keeps the voltage relatively constant regardless of any minor variations in the input voltage. This is especially true with some AC adapters because not all AC adapters are very well regulated so an adapter that says 9 volts might give you something more like 12 volts when it's unloaded at least. And also a battery that says 9 volts might give off like, I don't know, 9.5 volts or something like that when it's brand new and fully charged. A voltage regulator, your circuit won't care. So all you got to do is pay attention to the dropout voltage, which is basically just a rating on your voltage regulator that tells you how high the input voltage must be above the regulated level and if it's not, the regulated level will be kind of unstable. It might kind of fluctuate, it might dr drop. So for a 5 volt regulated circuit, 9 volts is plenty enough headroom because if your battery drains to the point where the dropout voltage becomes an issue, it's probably not going to be able to provide hardly any current whatsoever at that point anyway. Now there's two main types of voltage regulators, linear and switching. This is a linear regulator here. As you can see it requires very few external components 
except for a few like teeny tiny capacitors and at those sides they're like a dime a dozen so you almost don't need to factor them in at all. In a nutshell, low value capacitors are better at filtering out high frequency noise in a power supply and large value capacitors are better at filtering out low frequency noise in a power supply. The way you hook it up is like this. Simply connect them directly between power and ground in your power supply or basically at any point in the circuit. As long as there's nothing in series with the capacitor, it'll work fine. Just make sure you pay attention to polarity if your capacitor is polarized. If there's no polarity identifying marking on the capacitor, then it is not polarized and it doesn't matter which way you put it in. If it does matter, it will be marked as such. On a radial leaded capacitor like the one on the left, there will be a band on the side that has the negative pin, or lead, or leg, or whatever you want to call it. Also, you'll also notice that on an axial leaded capacitor, which is in the shape of a resistor, the band will have arrows sort of drawn into it. The arrows point at the negative lead. Also, on a radial leaded capacitor, you'll notice that one leg is slightly shorter than the other. Assuming you haven't cut them, the short leg is the negative one. There's a few easy ways to remember it. Number one, you can consider that even in today's society where people try to treat each other equally, occasionally short people are viewed in a negative manner. Also, the shorter someone is, the closer they are to the ground. It's very important that you pay attention to the polarity and double check the circuit before you turn it on because if you get it wrong the capacitor will explode. So let's go back to the different kinds of voltage regulators and differences between them. Although I'm not going to really go into detail explaining why, linear regulators are relatively inefficient. Switching regulators are much more efficient but they require a lot more external components such as inductors, capacitors, and maybe like an external tra switching transistor as well. So, you know, they're, they're quite a bit more complicated than a linear regulator. So they're less than entirely suitable for most obvious applications. It, to be honest, I wouldn't want to mess with a switching one. I mean, seriously, look at all these calculations you gotta make just to find the right components to use for a given voltage. I mean, do you really want to mess with all that? I mean, I don't. <laughs> but luckily, a company called Dimension Engineering has come through. They've basically made something for when you've got, when you've already got a DC voltage that's below like 30 volts. You can use this thing to power your circuit. It's not that much bigger than a linear regulator and it has the same pinout as a popular one. So it's really not any harder to use than a linear regulator. This is helpful because, mainly because if you're running your circuit off of batteries, a switching regulator, which is more efficient, will help save on battery life because it doesn't waste nearly as much power as a linear regulator does. Also, if you look at the data sheet, you'll see that it's protected from over temperature or over current. So that means accidentally shorting out your circuit or a fault like an actual failure isn't going to cause an epic failure. And speaking of which, the next video is going to be talking about how to prevent your circuit from blowing up.